Repeat after me. Mm -hmm. I. I, Lisa Orman. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And the governments established in the United States. And the governments established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. Impartially. Impartially. And justly. And justly. Perform all the duties of council person. Perform all the duties of council person. Of the first ward. Of the first ward. For the term commencing January 1st, 2022. For the term commencing January 1st, 2022. And expiring December 31st. And expiring December 31st. 2024. 2024. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm done. <laughs>
With that, Councilman, congratulations to you, to your family, and to all. Have a happy new year. Thank you, everyone. Good evening, Council President Yamakaitis, members of the Council, family, friends, and residents of the great city of Linden. As I begin my State of the City address, I would like to thank each of you and wish you all a happy and healthy new year. I would have preferred to see you all in person, but however, due to COVID restrictions, much to my chagrin, we'll have to do this virtually. Before I begin, I want to extend congratulations to our re-elected council members. Councilwoman Lisa Roman of the 1st Ward, Councilman Armando Medina of the 9th Ward. They are both valued members of my administration. Let me begin by saying the city, your city, is stronger than ever. We're no longer a city of smokestacks or oil refineries. Rather, we're a city that has proven that industry, commerce, and our residents can live and work cohesively. We have proven it is not merely improving the past, it is moving forward toward the future. It is a great honor to come before you this evening as Linden's mayor. Our goal shall always be to keep the best interests of our valued residents in the forefront of our minds. You will always be the shining light that guides us. What I hope to provide and what you have every right to expect is this administration's most dedicated efforts for the betterment of the residents of our city. My goal has been, is, and shall always be to focus on the taxes our residents pay. In this most important aspect, I am more than proud that our city taxes, along with our garbage and sewer taxes, have not been raised for the last five years. To my knowledge, there is no other city in Union County, and perhaps this state, that can make that representation. It is important for our residents to know that we did this without layoffs and without elimination of any essential services. Let me also mention our Linden Board of Education. Although this board is an autonomous body, I was able to share my vision of the tax burden with them and have received their full cooperation and keeping their part of the tax bill at a 0% increase. This is the third consecutive year that they have accomplished this. Council and I applaud them for their efforts and our appreciation goes out to them. The progress we have made in this area of taxation is not only for the present, but for future generations as well. The revenue from redevelopment has been a vital part in helping us achieve this goal. We have seen this manifest in Linden through the incredible increase of our property values, the highest in the history of our city. I would like to show you from where our increased revenue to ease the tax burden will be derived. The Linden Logistics Center in our Trimley Point area of town. This 4.1 million square feet of Class A warehousing already has two tenants, World Class Distribution Services and a second tenant, Peloton. There are currently six additional buildings that are under construction. This center will generate $198 million in tax revenue for the city over the next 30 years. The Citizen Linden at 307 West Elizabeth Avenue. 234 luxury apartment units will be at this location with 292 parking spaces. There's also 4,500 square feet of retail space available. This development will generate $25 $2 million in taxes for the city over the next 30 years. Meridian 1001 on West Elizabeth Avenue. This is the former United Lacquer Building, which was demolished. Full construction should start in the spring of 2022. There'll be 402 residential apartment units with amenities also, with retail on the ground floor. The city will take in over $30 million in revenue over the next 30 years. Center Point, which is the former Walmart shopping center, 315,000 square feet of Class A warehousing has been approved with full construction to begin in the spring. This is the former Linden Plaza shopping center 
And the city expects to bring in $22 million in tax revenues over the next 30 years. City Village, 1140 East St. George Avenue. 113 luxury apartment units with amenities have been built. It is 100% occupied with 18,000 square feet of retail space, which includes a restaurant. This development will generate $12 million in tax revenue for the city over the next 30 years. Meridia Lifestyles 2 on Southwood Avenue. This 145 apartment unit is at 85% occupancy with 8,600 square feet of retail space. This particular project will generate $16 million in tax revenue for the city over the next 30 years. DC Hospitality, Cube Smart Self Storage, and Woodspring Suites on East Linden Avenue. This property was vacant land for decades. The Woodspring Suite is fully operational, and the Cube Smart facility is fully operational. This particular pilot will generate $14 million for the city over the next 30 years. RNG Energy, the former Clayton Block. This property has been stagnant for decades. This facility will turn organic waste into a natural gas and other organic recycled material. The project is scheduled to generate over $39 million in taxes over the next 30 years, with additional host community benefits to the city of Linden. Gothel's Commerce Park at 2525 Brunswick Avenue. This is the former Simmons mattress factory. The building, the existing building, was over 100 years old. This is 290,000 square feet of Class A warehousing space, which is approved. This particular property will generate $37 million in tax revenues over the next 30 years. The Clark Redevelopment Project in the corner of West Elizabeth Avenue and Northwood Avenue. This particular property will generate over $52 million in tax revenues for the city. As you have heard, these redevelopment projects and their revenue will realize approximately $450 million in revenues over the next 30 years for the city of Linden. Legacy Square Shopping Center is one of our biggest thriving developments. It's home to many eateries such as Chick-fil-A, Taco Bell, Freddy's Frozen Custard and Steak Burgers, Panda Express, and Wingstop. It's also home to our flagship Walmart. We expect more businesses when the leases have been signed by the property owner. On another note, we have many events that have taken place and projects that have been contemplated. For the last several years, we have honored our hometown veterans by hang, hanging banners on our light poles along Wood Avenue. These veterans have served and in some cases given their life in the service of our armed forces. We also hosted dinner for these veterans and their families. This reception in their honor has been so well received that it has become a tradition, which we will continue. During this most difficult time, because of the pandemic, when people were not able to work and families had fallen on hard times, we were able to provide food and in many cases had it personally delivered. We did this through donations from our residents and corporate neighbors. The appreciation was overwhelming and the feeling was heartwarming. Another part of this pandemic that we addressed was how difficult it was to receive the vaccine and also the opportunity to be tested. Since May, we have provided a facility at our PAL building for easy access to the vaccine. Now, with the latest outbreak of the virus, we're offering availability to be tested at our JTG Recreation Center and our PAL building ensuring that we can continue to push the city forward. We have partnered with Pastor Pamela Jones and Communities in Cooperation for our Linden First program, where we host job opportunities for our residents. I'm very proud of our fire and police departments. During this pandemic, they have worked without concern for their well-being. The Chief of Police, Chief Hart, and his department continue to work diligently to keep our communities safe. I would like to thank the police for taking their time to host National Night Out and their other community policing programs. I want to thank the Chief of the Fire Department, Chief Hasco, and all our firefighters for enabling our children and their families to attend the Fire Prevention Night 
and their fire safety programs. What is of paramount importance is the protection of our children and our families, and I applaud both departments for their efforts. I would be remiss if I didn't mention the employees of our Public Works Department, who often work in very difficult conditions. I want them to know how much their efforts are appreciated. I point to the last hurricane that hit the Northeast, Hurricane Ida, and the work they did to restore our city back to normal. My sincere thanks to each department in our city. You have contributed so much to the goals of this administration and continue to help move our great city forward. Thank you, each and every one of you, for your hard work and efforts. A special thanks go to my office staff who take care of the day-to-day -day operations of my office. It's a very busy office, and my staff has handled it with the utmost professionalism. I thank them for taking this journey with me. Recently, I directed our Special Improvement District Director, Mike Bono, to start the process of changing the facades on our buildings in the downtown area. Along with the Special Improvement District Director and his office manager, Mickey Ponticello, and my Chief of Staff, Alex Laspinoso, we visited various towns to look at the facades on buildings in other downtown areas. Now, this is a monumental project that is still in the planning stage. I feel confident we can get this done. It blends in with our redevelopment, making our storefronts more attractive. We believe this will encourage people to shop and support our local businesses here on Wood Avenue. Let me also report that the funding for this project will come from the budget allotted to the Special Improvement District. We had, in cooperation with our City Council, the Cultural and Heritage Committee, the Special Improvement District, the Mayor's Youth Commission, and all of the ethnic committees which were all geared toward the different multicultural segments of our city. All these festivals were well attended by our residents and other visitors to our city. It was our effort to bring all of our ethnic groups together. My thanks and appreciation goes to all those who were involved and to the volunteers who made these events possible and special for all of us. We are honored this past September with the presence of the First Lady and President Duda of Poland. As a community, we were all honored to have them visit the great city of Linden. This visit made our Polish population very proud. As a matter of fact, it made all of us proud. It and was the first time in history that a head of state visited our great city of Linden. Once again, at this holiday time, we were happy to be able to celebrate the Christmas tree lighting, our breakfast with Santa, and the lighting of the menorah. The smiles of all made this holiday time very special. This is not the time for political comment, but I cannot avoid the obvious. Yes, I will be seeking re-election in 2022. If elected, it will be my third term as your mayor. If the people of our city choose to re-elect me, I pledge to continue to work tirelessly and to be accessible to you. I want each of you to know that my leadership skills as your mayor will go into this job. I recognize that the authority I have comes from you, the people. And you have the right to expect my most dedicated efforts. In closing, it is a great honor for me to be your mayor. I so much appreciate the confidence and the help you have given me over these seven years. Besides my family and their well-being, this city is my first priority. To my family and my wife, I sincerely want to thank you for the support you continue to provide. I pledge to you, the residents of this city, I will continue to lead this city and its financial ship in a way that will make everyone proud. This is what I work to achieve, and I'll end by saying, I will always keep lending first. <laughs>